You said something that sounded so simple, but it's so brilliant. Most agents forget to close. It's like going on the best listing appointment of your life and then you forget to ask for the listing contract. I've done that before. I'm reliving it emotionally. I'm in a glass box of emotion right now. I'm, that's happened to me. The world's changing. The market is changing. And yet the things that you're doing are still working. Give me a little bit, set the stage for me, because no one is just born a mega agent. Like you have to kind of go through a process to get there. But you kind of chose to start doing these seminars. Is that how it evolved? Yeah, well, I, I really enjoy teaching people. And I also found that it was a very scalable way to talk to a lot of people at once. Like I could get in a room and I could talk to 30 people for an hour and a half instead of having all of those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And for me, that was a lot better use of my time. So my lender partner and I kind of linked up and we started doing these on a monthly basis and they just grew over time. And we've probably done close to a hundred of them now. Wow, okay. So I, I want to I get the model and then I want to go through and I want to document the system. So, and my goal here is that when I understand the model, that's my blink. I get the idea. Then I kind of want to go step by step because I find that the details often hold a lot of the hacks. So the model itself, if I get this wrong, tell me from what I'm hearing though, the model itself is, is partner with a lender, then get a bunch of people in a room, teach them about the wealth prospect of buying instead of renting, then show a bunch of houses, write a bunch of contracts and have a bunch of closings. Just put it shortly. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Love that. So, so how do I do it? Okay. So now I'm, let's just pretend I'm sitting here and I'm excited about it. What, what's step one? Well, I think you just made it sound so simple and that's actually the key to it. It's simple and agents tend to overcomplicate things. Um, I have so many agents reach out to me like, hey, I want to do this. I want to get started. And they're way overthinking it. At, like what we started with is not what we currently do today. It's a, it's a living, breathing thing. It's a system that's evolved over time and we've figured out how to improve it along the way. The most important thing is just build some type of foundation and just start and you're going to build from there, right? It's like a house. You build the foundation and then you're going to add the floors. Um, and that's how it's grown over time. So to put it simply. Let's go sequentially. So step one was kind of find this lender that I'm going to partner with. What, what's the right avatar for that? Like if I'm looking up and I know 10 lenders right now, what's the qualities in the human that I want to pick? Yeah, that's a great question. I think what you're really looking for, obviously someone that you have chemistry with, you guys can kind of feed off of each other's energy. You want someone that can more or less explain the mortgage process like they're talking to a kindergartner. I think there's a lot of really smart lenders out there who also get really bogged down into the minutia of it. And that's just too much for someone that's never bought a home before. It might be the information that a skilled investor needs, but someone that's like, I need to get started and I have no idea what to do. They need the simple version. Also looking for someone that maybe is like a little bit younger, someone that they they feel like they can relate to. Someone, yeah, exactly, like Jason's age or younger. Like, um, like, oh. Somebody that's hungry. That was the thing about the lender that I partnered up with. He was relatively new to the business. He was working on a team. So he had kind of the experience behind him and the resources, but he himself was newer to the business and he was super hungry to get business. So he was game to do whatever. He's like, yeah, I'll do it. Um, you want someone that it's going to be a long-term relationship that you're partnering with. You're not just like cycling through different lenders every time. Perfect. Okay. So now I have found the lender. I find someone who I have chemistry with. We complement each other and this person can teach and, and I can teach. I've And he, this person has to be able to explain the mortgage process in the most simple of terms so that it doesn't alienate anybody. It brings them towards them, not pushes them away. And I got to get someone who's as hungry as I am to go out because there's nothing easy about helping first time home buyers buy houses. Just like there's nothing easy about helping someone buy their fourth house. It's just not easy. So now that I've done that, I'm scared to death because now I got to write a class, Kim, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I don't even know how to write a class. I haven't even gotten my instructional engineering degree in classroom etiquette. What do I do now? How do you do it? I don't even know how to write a class, um, but I will tell you what I did. So there's a wonderful resource on KW Connect, and I'm sure it's probably still there. It was at the time. There is a PowerPoint slide on there called My First Home. And I downloaded that and I used that as the skeleton of my course. So if someone wants to go out and do this tomorrow, just 
R&D it, right? Don't overcomplicate things as a reason to take, not take action. So there's different things you might add in specific to your market, but we don't need to give them the like 201 version of home buying. We're giving them the 101. Make it simple and make it easy to just get started. It's so good. By the way, we, we just rewrote my first home. As you know, I, I know you know, because that, that book's been updated. And the, the whole idea on that book was that agents uh, would be buying it and they, they would be gifting that to first time home buyers with maybe a letter inserted in it about why they would be doing business. So like that's that's there. I love that. Okay, so now I got the class. I got the lender, and I got the class. And my life is probably different than yours, Kim, because when a market center knows that you're showing up to teach, the room gets filled with people. I show up, and there's like two people there. Happens all the time. H- how do I get? And <laughs> literally, it happened to me. I tried to teach in this building, and no one showed up. It was the best. H- how do I now? Am I ready to go out and get people? And like. What am I advertising? Is it an is it an event bright? Am I do I have to find a place? Is it virtual? What do I do next? Initially we did them in person at a local okay. brewery and now we're doing them virtually. Anybody that's thinking about getting started, that's the recommendation that I usually make is like keep your costs low. Don't spend a ton of money if you don't need to. Um, Very few venues are probably going to let you do something for free there. If you have that free connect, awesome. Take advantage of it. But otherwise, don't spend a ton of money. Just do it on Zoom. So Eventbrite is a fantastic tool to have people register on. You can put information on the event. We took testimonials at one point and put that into our event description so people kind of know, hearing from other people what they're getting signed up for. And then just pick a date and market it. I know there's no bad ideas when it comes to marketing, but what are the two or three things that I have to do? Well, it's lead generation really more than marketing. I know I said market it, but ultimately you're generating leads. And that's probably one of the areas where a lot of agents make mistakes is they just put up an ad or they put up a sign and they just hope that people are going to show up. So early on, a lot of, and actually still today, a lot of our marketing was done on Facebook because again, I was, I didn't have a sphere of influence in this area. And so I had to build that up from somewhere. Um, There's so many ways you could approach doing this. If you had an apartment complex nearby that you wanted to advertise it in. Um, there's there's tons of options. I think just pick something and do it consistently. When we started, command wasn't what it is today. So plenty of agents can run Facebook ads through command super, super simply. And I think that would be a great resource to use when putting one of these together. I love that. Okay. So now I, I, I'm I hop on the old Zoom machine and I give the greatest hour ever. I levitate during it. You've seen it. It's phenomenal. <laughs> And now, now what do I do? Are there, are there any rules of conduct during it? Should I be in the chat talking to people? Give me the, give me the scoop. Yeah. So this is about an hour and a half or so. Um, you want to set the stage first by letting people know, like, we're not just going to sit here and watch in the background. Like this is going to be participation. We want engagement. If you have a question, chances are someone else in this little zoom room has the same question. So don't hold back. So we kind of set the tone by making everybody just quickly introduce themselves. What are they hoping to get out of today? What type of property are they looking to buy? Um, If they're not even sure why they're here, just tell us a little bit about yourself. So we go through and talk a little bit about that, kind of um, do that icebreaker, so to speak. And then we jump into talking about the market. I like to get a pulse on what people think about the market because it's so, so surprising. Um, Like last year when we were in the craziest seller's market we have ever experienced, people were saying it's a buyer's market. So I take that opportunity to educate them on what that means. What are, how do we tell if it's a buyer's market or a seller's market? What does that mean for you as a buyer? If it's a seller's market, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad time to be a buyer. This, these are just the things that you need to keep in mind. We talk about the benefits of homeownership, um, tax advantages, equity building, all the great things that come along with it. And then my lender spends a good amount of time talking about pre-approval. What do they need to know? What's the minimum credit score required to buy? Because that's a common objection we hear is, oh, my credit's not good. And that's another one where we encourage participation. We'll say, hey, everybody really quickly, just type in the chat box. Tell us what you think the minimum credit score you need to have in order to buy a home is. And often it's like 750, 700. And so it's just an opportunity to educate people that they might be in a position to buy and not even realize that they are. Um, we talk about like how much down payment we you need. Tons of people still think you need 20% down. Massachusetts actually has a 
down payment assistance program that for certain people they can put no money down. So we talk a little bit about that. And then after my lender talks about the lending side of things, the costs involved in buying, at that point, it were probably 60% of the way through, I start to soft close people. So ton, a lot of agents make the mistake of not closing for the appointment. And so what I'm doing is we talk about the timeline. You're sitting here today. Okay, you, we just gave you this information about the market. We just gave you this information about getting a mortgage. What comes next? And I like to set the expectation that anybody that's really 12 or months, 12 to 18 months out in the process or less, let's meet for an appointment. I want to get everybody in my world as early as possible because as it used to be 78%, but the stat is even higher. It's like in the 80s, the high 80s. 78% of buyers will work with the first agent that they meet. So I want to be that person, right? I want to get into relationship with them, even if it means I'm nurturing them over a long period of time. And yet we know that so many um, buyers, their timeline might change, right? You might get them into the process and they think they're a year out and suddenly that perfect home comes on the market and they're okay with breaking their lease for that property. So getting them into our world and getting them into relationships. So I'm setting that expectation that like the next step is let's set up a time one-on-one -on -one to talk. Then we spend a little bit more time going through what does it look like once you put an offer in? What are all the costs involved? Deposits, home inspection, and how does the appraisal work? And we wrap up by talking about different types of properties, multifamily, condo, single family, pros and cons of each. What do you need to know for the lending side of things? And then at the very end, we're giving time for questions. I'm, again, I'm saying, hey, you know, if you're in this timeline, let's set up a time to meet. Here's a link to my calendar. We're going to send follow up materials. Feel free to reach out. And I'm kind of priming them for that appointment. In fact, I just a month ago closed a sale with a buyer that came to one of our events in 2018. So it took her four years to buy a condo, but we had four years of relationship. And you know what the funniest part about it is? Her mom is a licensed real estate agent and she in this state and she used me. I love it. I got I'm curious, right? Like at, at, at this point, you can drive any car you want. You can live anywhere you want. You, you mean you, 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 you have massive success. You, you can go on any vacation you want. What, what keeps you getting out of bed every morning and working this hard at this? Like what, what's driving all of this? It's funny because early on it was like you go through phases, right? You First you need to make the money, right? And you're always like, when I make six figures, my life will be better. Then you hit that milestone and you're like, my life is still the same. Um, I think for me, it's just like some of the sales that I've made the least amount of money on have been mo the most satisfying sales. Like seeing a single mom who could only afford a $210,000 condo, which by the way, our average price point is pretty close to six fifty. dollars um, So, you know, that's not a promising outlook to know you're pre-approved for something that there's really not much out there for, but, you know, helping that single mom making maybe $3,000 off of that transaction, but just the amount of gratitude that she had for us helping her experience something that she never thought was going to be possible for her. That's what keeps me going. You know what? It's, it's actually a great answer because it sounds like helping people, regardless of the price point and helping realtors, regardless of how long they've been in the business is your, is a mission. And it's, it's one that you've thrived at. Um, this is awesome. I literally feel like I could start tomorrow and run this model. And that's exactly what we were looking for. Kim, we are so grateful for everything that you're doing for Keller Williams and for the industry and for homeowners. And uh, on behalf of Gary Keller and Mark King, thank you very, very much for doing this with us. I got more. I know you loved it. Click right here.